Welcome to Therapy Ball Work for your glutes and your quads. These are problematic areas for those of us that sit for long periods of time, whether that's driving the kids around to all the activities that they have or sitting at a desk or a combination of all of those. Um, a lot of us have tight quads and tight glutes or not even necessarily tight. Sometimes that can be a bit deceitful in the wording. It's just not working the way we want them to. Maybe they're not activating like we'd like them to, or they're not relaxing like we'd like them to. So this therapy ball work is designed to help massage out these areas and to help bring them into better activation so that they can fire properly. If you try squatting, if you try um, different other kinds of movements, you'll need the activation through these muscle tissues. Sometimes they get a bit sleepy from what we've been doing, so we're gonna work to bring them back online and make them healthy, increase circulation and blood flow, which is always, always a great way to keep the tissues and the joints healthy. So we're gonna be using the, like a large therapy ball. I have a preference for the Yoga Tune-Up Alpha therapy ball. It's my fave. Um, but you could use, maybe if you have two smaller size balls and you want to put them inside a sock, tie the sock up and those two balls can work together to function just basically the same way the larger therapy ball will. The, you could also use a tennis ball. Again, the thing with tennis balls, surface is a bit slippery um, and you may also find that it's not quite big enough for what we're working on today, but we'll, uh, we'll give it our best. So. We are gonna start coming into what's called Ardha Shavasana. So it's, it's like Shavasana, but don't fall asleep Shavasana. You're gonna lay down on your back with your knees bent, have your therapy ball somewhere handy. And on your back with your knees bent, your feet flat, and we'll set the arms away from the body, palms facing up. So this is a good spot to just take a few breaths. It's important to find full deep breaths when you're doing massage work for your body because this work can get quite uh, sensational, we'll say. And when the work is sensational, you really need to remind your nervous system that your body is safe. So these deep, full, long breaths at the beginning will help to signal that to your nervous system. All right, so for the remainder of this class, the one thing you have to do is breathe. Everything else is optional. You can take the ball out at any time. You can give yourself breaks, but you have to keep breathing, okay? So let's start with one side of your butt cheek. So you're gonna lift your hips up, slide the therapy ball underneath, and it's gonna go into the meaty portion of your butt. So there are a variety of muscles back here and we're gonna just generally call them your glutes, okay? Both knees are bent, both feet are flat, and this is important to keep your sciatic nerve safe, so please keep the knees bent, resist the urge to straighten out the leg, especially on the same side as the ball. And then meander the ball through the tissues on one side, so stay away from the tailbone, you're not crossing over, you're just staying on this one side. Again, the kind of, uh, thing that happens quite often here is that people are like, wow, this is quite terrible. I'm gonna do this faster so it hurts less. Okay, it shouldn't hurt like bruising. It should hurt like hurts so good. Like it's getting into those naughty spaces that need attention and love. So you're gonna keep massaging through until you hit a spot that feels like it needs a little extra attention, okay? Find that spot and then hold still. Hover your foot on the same side as the ball. Again, keep the knee bent. And then start to do, I like to call them little clamshells. So you're gonna open the knee up and I'll remind you to breathe. So inhale to open the knee to the side. And when you exhale, pull the knee to point back up towards the ceiling. So it's a slight abduction, abduction opening. And then squeezing the legs together, adducting your legs. All right, opening as you breathe in. And one last time as you exhale, point the knee towards the ceiling. Whew. Foot comes back down to the floor. You're gonna move the ball to another spot that needs love and attention. Oh yeah, that's a good spot. <laughs> and maybe you're gonna do the same thing again, that 
clamshell move or maybe you just want to explore movement through the hips so maybe for this one you're just going to create big circles in the air again if you've stopped breathing start breathing again move very slow maybe a little bit slower than you wish you were moving and if you find a spot that feels particularly exciting, particularly spicy, you can hold it there, maybe take a breath or two, a little tiny movement in that area. Awesome, then put your foot back down. So if this is spicy enough for you, you're getting enough um, of a massage here, you're gonna keep working like this. If you want to add on, you can try crossing your ankle above the opposite knee. So I'm doing my right butt cheek right now. I'm crossing my right ankle just above the left knee and I'm gonna continue to massage through the tissues. Whew, that is a good time. So I can go anywhere from the top of my pelvis down to my sit bone. So anywhere fluffing up the tissues here. And I once heard this area on the outer hip called the pain cave of doom. I feel like that's a bit dramatic, but if you roll the ball towards the outer glutes, so you kind of lean that knee down towards the floor, you may find that it gets very exciting very quick <laughs> and keep breathing, but maybe you explore that um, excitement in the area. There's something called sustained compression. So you can lean into the therapy ball, hold for a few seconds, make sure you're breathing. <sighs> Longer exhales help to relax a little bit more. So every now and then if you need to let out a sigh, might help to really dissipate tension in the area. <sighs> Move through. I like a side to side movement when I'm massaging, but some people might find little circles are good or up and down, or maybe you just wanna go willy nilly all over the place, totally fine as well. Try not to keep massaging the same spot. Try to move the ball up and down. Um, no offense, but your glutes are actually quite large. So make sure you're utilizing all the muscle space. All right, when you feel like you've enjoyed yourself enough for this side, you can uncross the legs, take the ball out, and then give yourself a moment in Ardha Shavasana, a couple of breaths, see how this feels. And then gently lean the knees side to side. So rocking that out, see if you can feel the difference between the two sides of your body. Oh yeah, good times. Hopefully one side feels almost like it's a little fluffier than the other, okay? And then again, just to see the effect of how this affects your hips and to give your body a brief moment of break in between, I want you to hug the knee in towards the chest that you just massaged out. So I did my right glutes, I'm gonna hug in my right knee, and then I'll straighten my left leg out, okay? So Ardha Apanasana. The bottom of my left foot's gonna push down away from the hip, so I'm really getting a length through the left hip flexor. And then draw the right knee in just a little bit closer, and give it a rock side to side. So this is just a nice massage for the hip joint. It also gives you a moment to assess your mobility and how the hips are feeling. So after we've done this on the side you just massaged, I want you to compare and contrast with what that feels like on the other side. So hug in the knee that you haven't massaged yet. So for me, I haven't massaged my left glute. I'm hugging my left knee in and I'm straightening my right leg out. And right away, I can notice a difference between the two sides. Give it a little rock side to side. Awesome. And then Ardha Shavasana again. Give yourself a moment. So I talked about before about how these areas can feel tight and sometimes we just need to activate a little bit more. So I wanna give us one more little exercise in between sides to feel that activation. So we're gonna straighten out the leg we haven't massaged and then open the knee to the side that we have massaged. So my right knee is out, my left leg is straight and I'm gonna squeeze just the muscles in my right butt cheek. 
Okay, maybe some of the muscles on the left are gonna turn on, but try to turn them off. <laughs> Just have the right active. So squeeze, 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 squeeze. Take a nice big breath in. And then as you breathe out, I want you to slowly release the muscles in the right butt cheek. So slow, 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 let it go. Awesome, we'll do that again. Squeeze your right butt cheek. Firm, 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 firm. Awesome, breathe in fully. And then as you exhale, let it go. Slowly release all the muscles. Slow, 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 slow. Awesome. So we're going to compare that with the side we haven't massaged yet. So straighten out the leg you have massaged. Open the knee to the side that hasn't been massaged and try to squeeze that butt cheek. Try. <laughs> Once you've got that activation, take a breath in. And then as you breathe out, you're gonna slowly release <laughs> the muscles. And we'll do that again. So activate, squeeze the muscles in the left butt cheek or in the, the side you haven't massaged. And then let it go in slow motion, three, two, one. So what you may notice is that the side you massaged releases nice and slow. It feels really, really good and easy. And the side that you haven't massaged might feel a little like clunky, like you're going down a dirt road or something. So this just kind of shows you that your brain has connected to the muscle fibers in that area a little better than it did on the other side. So we're gonna swap sides and I'm going to swap sides here. Move this aside. And we're gonna place the ball underneath the butt cheek that you haven't massaged yet. So laying down on your back, back into Ardha Shavasana. Knees bent, feet flat. Again, resist the urge to straighten out the leg. If you've ever had sciatic nerve issues, you know you don't want to aggravate that nerve. So keep the knee bent. Slide the large therapy ball or the two balls in a tote underneath the other side and then start to move in slow motion. Sometimes it's easy to move around. If you're on a mat, it's a bit easier. Um, doing this on carpet gets a bit tricky. You kind of have to spot clean. You work on one spot and then you shimmy your body to another spot. Um, on a mat makes it a bit smoother to move around. Ugh. <laughs> and one side's usually a bit more uh, exciting, I don't know, <laughs> than the other. So give yourself time or a little extra time where you need it in your body. Whew, I just got back from a long trip, lots of sitting. My glutes are loving this. <laughs> so again, kind of making faces, but remind yourself breathing is important. Okay, so Anytime you're doing this therapy ball work, it's more important to breathe than it is to massage your body, so keep breathing. Once you find a spot, it, it might feel like a knot, it might feel like there's a ball of tension. You're gonna land on that and hold still, so stop moving your body. You're gonna hover your foot on the same side as the ball, and we're gonna do this clamshell move. Inhale to open the knee. Exhale to draw it back towards center. Knee points towards the ceiling. Inhale to open. Exhale, knee towards the ceiling. Then one more time, we're gonna open it up to the side. Squeeze and adduct your legs. Put the foot back down and then move the ball to another special spot that needs love. Oh yeah. And once you find that spot, maybe you're going to repeat those clamshells or maybe big circles in slow motion in the air. So imagine your knee is painting a circle on the ceiling. Make sure that you're still breathing. Awesome. After a few breaths working through this, maybe you want to find that one spot to ugh, scrub out there. Your foot comes back down to the floor to keep working through the tissues or cross the ankle over the opposite knee. It'll make it a bit more spicy, we'll say. Um, but it might be what your body needs. So definitely take what you need here. I like to use words like spicy and invigorating and sensational. 
uh, and exciting because the word pain has so much negative connotation. So really you want this to hurt so good. You want it to feel good. If you're getting bruising, if, if it actually is painful, you need to back off, do a little bit less, maybe have a cushier surface for the ball to set itself on, or maybe do a little bit less. You never want to feel like you're bruising yourself here. It should feel like a massage therapist's hands. Like it's, it's a bit exciting, but it's good and it feels good after you're done. So again, maybe we're going to that outer hip area. So this is glute med TFL area. These muscles get quite gummed up uh, from how we spend our, our life and how we're not quite moving as much as maybe we could be. Again, make sure you're breathing. The knee may lean down towards the floor as you explore this area. So you never want to stay in one spot too, too long. You just want to work out the issues that are in that area and then pivot the ball to another spot. Again, you're staying away from your tailbone, but you could go all the way down to your sit bone, which is kind of the sticky outy bone you feel like at the top of the back of the leg. And go all the way up to the top of your sacrum, which is the seashell like shaped bone right at the top of the pelvis there and scrub out anywhere in between let's give it about three or four more breaths to finish up this side <laughs> so exciting All right, let's be done that side. Uncross your legs, take the ball out. <sighs> a couple of breaths in Ardha Shavasana. Separate your feet a little wider than your hips and give the knees a little rock gently side to side. All right, knees back up to center. Again, we're gonna do um, Ardha Apanasana like we did on the first side. Hug the knee in towards your chest, straighten the other leg out. Hopefully they feel a bit more even here. Again, pushing the bottom of the foot down away from the hip, rocking the knee side to side. And then we'll swap out. So straightening that leg out, hugging the opposite knee in, giving it a little rock. Oh, it always feels so nice when it's over. <laughs> and then again, bending into the opposite leg. So this time I'm on my left side, so I'm bending my left knee, opening it out to the side. Just to see how it feels, I'm going to squeeze the left butt cheek, take a nice full big breath in. Then when you breathe out, slow motion, try to release in a smooth, easy fashion. And maybe that's a bit more accessible to you this time. So squeeze, engage, full breath in. Release, relax, full breath out. And then changing out your legs, opposite knee goes out to the side. Squeeze. Breathe in and then let it go slowly as you exhale. Nice breath in to activate, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then let it go. Awesome. Okay, so that's our glutes. We're gonna move from this major muscle on the back side of the body to these quad muscles on the front of the body. So using the same size massage therapy ball, we are going to break down your quads into three parts. So just above the knee, about halfway up, and then up at the top. Now, you're staying away from what I jokingly call the ovary brovary zone. I don't know why, but a lot of people when they're doing this therapy ball work, they tend to think that the quads end somewhere up in here. They don't, okay? Right where you get that crease in your hip when you sit on your heels or when you sit down, that's where we're staying below there, okay? So coming down onto your belly, the ball's gonna go just above your knee in your uh, supra patellar pouch. <laughs> supra just means above, patella is your kneecap, and pouch is pouch. So that's where the ball goes. 
Again, I'm gonna remind you, you wanna take nice, full, big breaths. <sighs> and then start to move around. Maybe you wanna bend your knee. Oh yeah, maybe you wanna strain the leg. Maybe you bend the knee, you give it a little rock side to side like you're wagging your little tail. Make sure you're still breathing. I personally find that the muscles on the inside of the leg here get very gummed up. And so I'll drop my, my ankle in towards the opposite leg and then try to straighten the leg out. Whew, that is a good time. Oh, give it a little rock again, side to side. So when you're going side to side, you're doing what's called cross fibering. You're working away across the muscle fibers. It's a bit spicier than a little micro stretch, which would be working your way up and down a little bit here. Awesome. Let's move the ball up. So we're going about halfway up the quad now. And you're gonna place the ball there. And honestly, for some of us, just laying here and taking a few breaths is fantastic. Again, it's called sustained compression. It's pretty exciting. You can just stay here and enjoy that. You can add on by bending the knee. Oof, slower you go, the more fun it is. Obviously by fun, I mean spicy. You can rock your shin side to side. <laughs> For some of us, it's quite clunky in there. Yes, yes. Um, clunky is not always a great thing. If your muscles are um, not quite functioning the way they will, it'll be a lot, it'll feel a lot clunkier. The muscle right down the middle is your rectus femoris, which is your uh, quad muscle that's also a hip flexor. So it's quite, um, feels like a cord. It's quite thick and fibrous. So that's, that's always gonna be the way it is. Just, just love on it anyway. So the one last option I'll add for you to maybe give it a try is to activate the muscle. So you could straighten the leg out and then engage your quads like you're trying to push the therapy ball down into the ground. So I'm kind of pulling up on my kneecap, activating through the quads. Then the next time you breathe out, you're gonna let it go and relax and soften. <laughs> And if you give that a try, you'll know that relaxing is the worst part. So move it to another spot, do the same thing again, contract, squeeze, 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 engage, and let it go. <laughs> okay, moving the ball up one more time. Again, staying below the hip crease on the quads. I've taught this kind of massage work for a long time now, and there's some debate whether spot two or spot three is um, the most sensational, so you judge in your own body. Um, it's said that oh, if it's spicier up towards the top, usually that's coming from glutes um, or hip issues, and if it's spicier down towards the knee, that could be coming from ankle or shin problems that you're working with. So. Just kind of a little note for you to tuck away as you learn about your body here. So if you've forgotten the whole breathing thing, make sure you're doing that. <sighs> Talking's a lot harder when it's this, uh, this exciting. So again, maybe you're using any of the tips we've already talked about, the shin wagging side to side, maybe the contract, relax. Maybe you just want a slow motion bend and straighten the leg. You can also bend and straighten at different angles. That'll massage the muscle at different angles, which feels quite um, uh, impressive. I don't know, spicy. Um, you're looking to kind of massage and create movement and slide and glide through the layers of your tissues uh, in different directions and, and that's accessed through moving your leg around while you're massaging. Okay, let's call that leg good, yeah? Come up off of the therapy ball 
And I like this little break between sides. If it's possible to sit on your heels, do so. Um, if it's not possible, don't worry, just kind of swing the legs around. Just take a look at your legs, see how they look. Um, I'm always trying to get bigger, stronger quads. And after I massage out one quad, it looks bigger and stronger. So it's very satisfying for me. Um, and that's a way that I can visually see that there is increased blood flow and circulation to that area. So after I've admired my amazing quads, take a drink of water. Water's super important to stay hydrated, obviously, and important as you're doing this kind of work. Um, so give yourself maybe another breath or two Take your break between sides and then come to lay down. We'll get into uh, the second side. Ball goes into your supra patellar pouch just above the kneecap. This one's actually kind of nice um, when you do this massage because you can cry silently into the floor and no one knows you're crying. It's kind of my favorite part about this. You shouldn't be crying. It shouldn't be that bad. Take some nice deep breaths. Again, maybe you're holding still that sustained compression option. Maybe you're bending the knee slowly. Maybe you're scrubbing out those muscles on the inside, dropping the ankle towards the opposite leg. Whew. Straightening and bending. The other thing to be aware of as you do this kind of work is what your face is doing. I might be a bad example. I have a very expressive face. I really am bad at poker. Uh, but as you're massaging through, try to keep your jaw from clenching or your face from scrunching too hard because you don't want to move the tension from your quads into your face. You want to keep your face relaxed. This should be somewhat entertaining as you're learning about the tension in your body. You want to be able to take full deep breaths and if it feels like it's all too much, give yourself a break. Take the ball out. You don't win an award for keeping the ball in there. So make sure that you're doing what feels good and honors what your body needs. And you can still breathe, still relax, keep a mostly neutral face. Ooh, okay, well that's fun. Let's move the ball up, go a little higher. We're in spot number two, about midway up the quad. Again, sustained compression could mean you just lay here and breathe. Maybe bending the knee, rocking the shin side to side. Make sure you're breathing. Again, you're gonna notice one side of your body will have a bit more tension. And it's not always the same. It's not always your right arm is tight in your right leg. Sometimes it's along the spiral line. It'll be your right arm, your left leg, or vice versa. Maybe you'll notice the glutes on one side are really tight, but the quads on the other. And, and again, the word tight doesn't necessarily mean that the muscles are shorter. We have this kind of idea. Sometimes they're just not connecting in a way that we functionally need them to to the brain. So sometimes it's more about neuromuscular connection than it is about um, shortness in the tissues. All right, so let's find a spot again. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> and we'll contract and relax. So you're gonna engage the muscle. See if you can squeeze the quad, push the ball into the floor, and let it go and relax. Maybe the ball moves to a slightly different spot and you want to repeat that. Oh, yep. Good times. As you exhale, release and relax. All right, we only have one more spot. Almost done. You're almost there. Balls into spot number three. Again, below the hip crease. You can just lay here, focus on breathing, trying not to die. It shouldn't be that bad. I'm a bit dramatic in my descriptions. Make sure that you're breathing. Maybe you're adding in this movement. Try to keep your face as neutral as possible.
And again, maybe you want to bend the knee, adjust the position of the knee, straighten the leg out so you're massaging at different angles. And this is a great reminder that your body is all interconnected. So sometimes we think that, you know, what's happening in the quads is just in the quads, but as you move your lower leg around, you'll notice that the movement in your lower leg is really affecting how your quads feel. Even if you just move your foot, some of you will be able, will be able to feel the effects of the foot movement in the quad. So if you're wearing high heels a lot, if you're wearing um, steel-toed boots or skiing a lot, that kind of stuff, flip-flops even, all those issues down in your feet are translating up into the quads and the hips. So make sure that you're spending time not just um, where you think the issue is, but upstream from where you think maybe the issue's coming from. Okay, let's give this three more breaths. We'll be finished soon. All right, take the ball out. Yay, all finished. So you can kind of give the knees a little bend, a rock side to side. And then a little bit of glute activation. So you have kind of three bony prominences here at the front. You have your ASIS, the sticky outy bones up here. Sticky outy is a very technical anatomical term. <laughs> the two bones here and then your pubic bone. So they kind of form a bit of a triangle. When you're laying down on your belly, I want you to feel like those three bones are trying to push down to make contact with the floor. Bend your knees so the bottoms of the foot are facing up towards the ceiling. Now, don't let any of those three points, so the hip bones and the pubic bone, lift away from the mat. I want you to lift your we'll say your right leg, as if it's gonna stamp your footprint on the ceiling, but don't let the three bones move. Okay, so activating through the glutes, lifting the leg, and put it back down. On the other side, so the bottom of the foot's gonna stamp towards the ceiling, but don't let the three points lift the, away from the floor, and then come back down. Now you know you're cheating if you're doing this, okay? It should only be a really small range of motion. Super strong, lift up. And lower down on the other side super strong lift up and then lower down open the knees a little bit wide and you're just gonna rock them back and forth like you're a little kid watching TV awesome so that's it for today's massage class for glutes and quads. I hope your hips are feeling amazing. As you get up from this work and walk around, notice how it feels in your body. Hope it feels amazing and I'll see you in another class.